welcome back. This is TMJ Course 104, The Close Lock. We're going to, my name's Dr. Gregory Pussell, and we're going to start off where we left off from TMJ Course uh, 103, which was the reciprocal click. Uh, we still have the bite in that's superior, that's driving this jaw joint up. As I said, the bite will always went out over the jaw joint, and it's driving this jaw up to the top of the head. It's crushing all of these blood ner uh, vessels and nerves up there. The, the disc, which I'm wiggling right now, is in front of the uh, jaw joint. It's been pulled forward by you know, a muscle, and it's being held there. In the reciprocal click, just to recap real briefly, you go through a rotational phase, and as you go into translation, you'll click back on that disc, and as you slide up completely open, that'll give you your full range of motion. As you start to close, your bite will slide back up and click back off the disc so that you can bite all your teeth together. So this disc clicks back on and off. In the close lock, it doesn't click back on and off. What that means is, is that you will go through your rotational phase, but you can't go through into translation. You can't get that extra 20 millimeters. You only can go about 22, 23 millimeters, and that's you know not enough to eat a dagwood sandwich. It's probably enough to probably put about one, maybe two fingers in there. So uh, this disc is in the way, and it won't allow this jaw to slide forward and translate. So if this happens on one side, as you can see in this skull, it's going to give you what's called a unilateral shift. Your jaw is going to actually slide to the right. In this case, the right side is locked up, the right jaw is in closed lock, and the left one is functioning normally, and that causes a severe shift to one side. In the uh, bilateral closed lock, of course, then it, the bite would open straight but only have limited opening. So what happens in time over time is, and this is why early uh, treatment is, is critical on a closed lock. If you get a closed lock, you need to get in as soon as you possibly can, because what will happen is, is that the next step after this is this, the muscles will start forcing this jaw joint down in order to get the translation, and it it will do that at the expense of the disc. It'll actually crush the disc, fold it, smash it, whatever, and once that happens, we can't recapture it. So people can often open up to maybe 30 millimeters, not quite get their full amount of opening because the disc is still in the way, but they have a limited opening, maybe 30 millimeters here, not quite three fingers, uh, maybe two, two and a half fingers, and uh, but because the disc is in the way. So uh, and then of course on closing, it, it's the same. It never pops back on and off. So again, the key to this is early, early treatment because as soon as something like this happens, you want to take the ability to recapture it before the, the, disc, start, or the disc starts to get crushed by the condyle. The tr treatment is similar. We're going to, to uh, uh, put a bite splint in in order for us to create enough height in the back for us to get us pop back on the, the disc so that this is in the harmonious bite position and the teeth are all inter interdigitating and locked together just like they ought to be. Uh, the teeth are now you know, out of the equation. We've added more height in the back. The, the subsequent treatment after some kind of a bite splint would be to, to, if the disc is recaptured, is for us to do, again, orthodontics, uh, putting crowns in there. We need something to put height on the back here to maintain this joint, joint position because otherwise the disc will just pop back off just like spitting out a watermelon seed. I thank you for watching. Uh, this is TMJ Course 104, and we'll talk about various modalities of uh, treatment and possibilities after and subsequent videos. Thank you again for watching.